Hi friends, welcome to Krakow's video series. Uh, in this video, I'll be discussing the Dashcat 11 analysis. I'll be doing the analysis for Quant and uh, LRDI and Marathi will be doing it for Verbal. So many of you who would have taken Dashcat 11 would have been a bit surprised by the difficulty level. Yes, the Quant and LRDI sections were definitely harder than what is generally CAT level. Quant was like I would say 25% harder, slightly above and every single question was slightly a little bit uh, tougher than uh, what is generally comes in CAT. None of the questions were like crazily difficult. But they were just like marginally difficult, more difficult than what is in CAT level. And all of them cumulatively added up to a very tough section. Similar with LRDI, it wasn't that the sets were very difficult. It's just that the sets are non-traditional. So whenever you have something like that, most people get very stuck in those kind of uh, sets. So let's take a look at each section by section. So as I said, quant, it was definitely difficult as compared to CAT difficulty level. What we are seeing is that uh, the even the toppers are scoring in like only 40. So it's a def definitely a difficult um, section. I scored like 21 in it. So uh, definitely a very difficult section. But it is important to have these kind of checks because it's uh, I don't want my student to have a reality check on CAT day. So this would be a reality check that uh, prepares you in September for a uh, difficult, maybe a difficult exam in November so that you get uh, more motivated to actually uh, uh, prepare for the next two months. But definitely it was, uh, if you get lower scores in this, do not be demotivated. Essentially, I want to make sure that even if tougher questions are uh, come your way or if quant is tougher than usual, because generally what happens is that uh, across three slots, slot one, slot two, slot three and across three sections, okay, Quant, Verbal and LRDI. So there is like quite a bit variation within slots and within uh, uh, sections also. Some uh, slots have a very difficult LRDI, some slots have a very difficult Quant. Uh, some slots, the Quant scores are like 5 to 6 marks lesser than the Quant scores in other slots. So whenever something is thrown, in, like a spanner is thrown in the works, I don't want my students to feel like suddenly that, okay, this is uh, are not doable and they, I, they shouldn't uh, crumble under the pressure. So we try to hold a slightly tougher than usual uh, Dashcat 11, especially because Dashcat 10 was on the easier side. But I feel that uh, do not get demotivated by that. The uh, Dashcat was designed to be slightly harder than usual. So do not be demotivated by the lower score. But it is also indicative of where your tolerances lie. How much harder can it go without uh, before you start uh, losing focus or before you start not being able to solve questions. So here the uh, general trends remain the same. There was a heavy emphasis on arithmetic, on geometry. And uh, from the other topics, the questions were slightly evenly uh, coming. So remember, even in a difficult uh, quant section, most of your scoring marks will come from the arithmetic section. Over here, there were three easy questions and you should not have missed on in those three easy questions. There were five moderate questions from arithmetic, again, doable. There were three difficult questions, even if you had not done that, there were eight easy, easy to moderate questions from arithmetic for the taking. Similarly, there was one moderate and three hard geometry questions. Each of these questions were uh, in the sense, uh, if you have a very good idea of the basics of geometry, this is something that you should have definitely been able to do. So again, it was not, uh, it wasn't uh, like very difficult to do or very difficult to get at least seven, six to seven questions right in this particular uh, uh, section. But again, what happens is that when you are faced with difficult questions or if you go through or skip through two, three questions without solving, your own confidence is so shaken that you are you find it difficult to focus as, as such. So make sure that that didn't happen to over here. Uh, whenever an easy or moderate question comes, make sure you solve it. Whether it comes after five hard questions, it doesn't matter. Because wherever you struggle, your peers are also going to struggle. Your competitors are also going to struggle. Also, one more thing that you have to note in these kind of sets is, do not go by just the topic alone. A lot of people say that, okay, I'm going to skip this topic, I'm going to skip that topic. And then the questions become harder from those topics. For example, the questions from number systems, probability and functions that were there in this quant section were not difficult. They were easily doable, but a lot of students struggled in those three questions because they are not used to solving them. A lot of students just skip those questions. The probability question was easily doable. Number systems question was doable by trial and error. Again, simple thinking should have told you that uh, if uh, these are the numbers in this base and that uh, these are the numbers in that base, uh, since the number is very doubling in a way, 
uh, it should clearly be a small base number otherwise you won't see a sudden expansion in the number of digits so using some logic like that some trial and error it should have been possible to do those questions even though they appear difficult as such similar with functions question it appeared deceptively hard but if you actually gave it two minutes it was easy to do as such so there are certain topics where people immediately look at it and go that i can't solve this question but in fact questions might be moderate or easy from those particular sections in fact i felt i skipped the question from functions the functions question was an easy question so again you should not miss easy questions like that or you should not skip questions like that just because they appear difficult or just because they come from a topic which generally is on the difficult side similarly basically uh, always remember whenever there's an easy or doable question even if the entire section is hard your job is basically not to have like an overall score of 50. A lot of people index their expectations of CAT or any of any particular section saying that I should get at least 40 over here or I should get 50 over here, me included. But the point is not to get 40 in a particular section or 50 in a particular section or 60 in a particular section. The point is that you should be outdoing your competitors. So if you see a particularly difficult section, just think you should actually stop and collect your thoughts and say that, okay, this is a difficult section. This is going to affect everybody. I need to be smart in how I pick the questions. I should not miss a single easy question because easy questions will be the difference. Incorrectly done easy questions are often the difference between high scores and low scores. So whenever you see a difficult section like this, remember, go back and see, did you miss any of the easy questions? That is where you should be holding yourself accountable because ultimately then it becomes a matter of holding your nerve. Who held their nerve better, did better in this section. They might not have gotten 60 marks, but they will get 99 percentile. So always remember your competition is not to get marks, but to get percentile. And even in difficult sections like this, your aim should be that I should be in the top 10 or I should be in the top 50 as such. So whenever you put those kind of aims, your strategy changes and you will be smarter in how you attempt the section. Same was the case with LRDI, here I felt the LRDI section was difficult. But again, if you immediately realize this is a difficult section, you would have adjusted the strategy. If in actual CAT you come up against a very difficult LRDI section, you should adjust your expectations and your strategy. Over here, the two four question sets, the first Einstein's puzzle and there was a four question uh, 2D space LR. Both of them, the one with the light bulbs, both of them were fairly easily doable. But what would happen is that you would be like, I can't just do 4 plus 4. Everybody has shown me I should do 4 plus 6 plus 4. I, I, even I have told that you should at least try to do 6 plus 4 or 4 plus 6 plus 4. But the fact is that when questions or sections become difficult, even if you do 4 plus 4 correctly, even that is enough. What often happens is that uh, when uh, uh, the sections become difficult, people don't even finish those 4 plus 4 or 8 questions, right? So remember, if a particularly difficult section comes for you, just try to get the two 4 plus 4 question sets at least right. Uh, if the 6 question sets become difficult for you, try to get the two 4 question sets right. Because what you can do then if from the 6 question set is try to solve particular parts of the problem. For example, in this uh, 6 question set, there were uh, problems that you could have solved without solving the whole puzzle as such. For example, in the skyscraper one, you could have solved individual questions as such. So your focus then should have been, this is a difficult section. I'll do the easier parts of this difficult section. And from the difficult sets, I'll try to do as many questions as I can. So in that way, you could have actually solved 11 questions and you would have easily been at the very high end of the scoring range. So that is basically what you have to do. Whenever you have difficult sections in LRDI or Quant, lower your expectations, lower the this. And basically, if you are smart about it, you should just say that I should not index myself to a number value or absolute score value. You should index yourself to a percentile value. And when you are targeting a percentile value, what matters more is that you do relatively better, not absolutely better. You should not uh, say that I will get all four sets right. To do relatively better, you have to basically be smart in how you pick the sets, in how which questions you pick. Whenever questions or set sections become difficult, having that kind of... Uh, hold on your nerves on maturity essentially lower expectations that is what will come into play so do not get disheartened by this particular section even i was fairly shocked by my scores but essentially you should take it as a lesson that whenever difficult sections get thrown at you lower your expectations because what will happen is that even if your score is lower right in i think in 2020 uh, the slot to lrdi was uh, exceptionally difficult and scores became much lower in that 
uh, on an average eight marks were added for everybody in that particular slot if i am remembering correctly so that was the difference in difficulty level when they normalize they'll take that into account and your scores will be adjusted up according to it but even if they are adjusted up you have to basically make sure that you are like doing much better than all the other people in your slot so just focus on doing the best you can under those circumstances so even if you have a very tough section once they it gets adjusted you will be much doing much better in the absolute score uh, uh, like adjusted score terms so do not fixate on a absolute score value if your section is difficult you have to lower the expectations lower of what is the uh, score you are going to get but irrespective of what your absolute score is once it is adjusted for difficulty your score will be respectable Okay, so with that, I'll leave you uh, with the analysis. Please keep attempting the dash cards. Thank you for tuning in. Hi friends, uh, my name is Maruti and I'm the co-founder of Kraku. In this video, we'll be looking at the analysis for dash card 11. Let us get started with the verbal section. Uh, the verbal section, in my opinion, was uh, definitely on the medium side, medium to difficult side. This was uh, slightly more, uh, the passages I felt were slightly on the difficult side to read. I couldn't find any passage which I felt was uh, very, very easy. Normally, uh, the topics seem to be, some of the topics interest me. Uh, in this particular case, I felt many of the topics were uh, not something that I was very interested in. Even though there were some uh, passages on politics, they became uh, more uh, complicated than simple politics or simple opinion of an author. Uh, and I think it started off also with uh, one topic. Uh, it was on uh, critical race theory, which uh, I was clearly not... Uh, very interested in. I was not even interested in reading about it and I felt uh, that probably affected my mindset where uh, I was not able to comprehend many of the terms that were being used. There were a lot of uh, terms which appear very intellectual uh, but I felt they were just uh, some uh, made up phrases, uh, social construct, uh, group identity, all of these things I felt, uh, uh, I just felt uh, I didn't really understand what they really mean. So using, uh, because of that, I think I was put off at the start itself where I felt uh, I was not doing very well. Uh, that uh, lack of confidence also impacted uh, my attempt. This is what I felt. Anyway, the critical race theory, I had difficulty in reading this uh, passage uh, because I had to go through it two, three times because I was not particularly understanding uh, what they were really saying. Some of the uh, conclusions that I would normally come to uh, were being uh, like contradicted by the other. So I had some difficulty with following this. But the questions on the other hand were not very difficult. Once you go through the passage uh, and spend some time in understanding it, I felt the questions were definitely on the easier side, but this took me some more time than I would have wanted, especially as this was the first passage that I attempted. So overall, I would give this to be a medium uh, level, difficulty level uh, set. The second one was about patents and innovation. This was exactly opposite. The first passage was difficult to read. But questions were easy. The second passage I felt was easy to read. I could actually read it. I could understand what the author was saying. But some of the questions were more complicated. So there were many inference based uh, questions which of the following would the author really agree with. Or uh, the uh, other way in which they asked that question. Which of the following would the author. Uh, there are three uh, statements that the author would agree with. But one statement he would disagree with. So those kind of things where you have to find out which of them is false. Uh, your mind has to be more tuned because once you see an option and you feel yeah this makes sense um, you should not immediately take that so that i had an issue in this passage uh, again that is the reason i was making this to be on the medium side because even though this was easy to read this was about startups this was about uh, the current affairs so overall it was something that uh, i was familiar with so i could read it quickly but the questions were not uh, very straightforward Uh, the next one was theories and their effects. This I spent a lot of time. This was the last RC that I actually attempted. I had some more time remaining. So I went through the passage twice. Normally I don't read the passage twice, but over here I had some more time. So I went through the passage twice. Uh, and after going through the passage twice, I was able to uh, answer this passage with high ac accuracy. But uh, overall, I would feel this was not a passage that somebody could attempt very easily after reading it once. If you spend a lot of time, then you will get your accuracy up. But otherwise, I felt this was definitely a passage which was slightly tough. This would take uh, some time for you to really understand and uh, answer. The last one was cognitive research. This I felt was the easiest of the four passages. Uh, this was also in science and technology. And I felt uh, I could understand what the author was saying. And even the questions were not very difficult. So overall out of the four passages, I felt this was the passage which was 
slightly on the easier side. Now coming to the verbal section, for me personally, I find para jumbles to be definitely on the harder side. Para jumbles somehow, uh, I always have difficulty in getting my accuracy up. This I mentioned earlier also, one of the reasons for that is because uh, even if I am able to identify the connect between two sentences, suppose out of 1, 2, 3, 4, I am able to identify that, okay, 3 and 2 will come one after the other, 3 coming first. Uh, and I also figure out that say 4 and 1 also come uh, one after the other, say after 1 comes 4. Now many times I come very close, but instead of uh, say if the correct answer is 3, 2, 1, 4, I mark it as 1, 4, 3, 2. So I am very close to actually answering it, but because there are so many permutations that are possible uh, of these 4 numbers, uh, I just miss out on it. Because of which and also because I am not super confident of my attempts in uh, para jumbles, I don't get a very high accuracy. The para summaries I felt were definitely on the easier side. I was able to easily understand the para summary and many of the options also I was able to rule out. I was uh, able to rule out that okay, this option for example was uh, showing the author's opinion more strongly than he was expressing it. For example, this is a very uh, important way in which you can eliminate some options and this happens very often in para summaries. Suppose in the para summary, the author said that okay, uh, this guy is a very good person. So if say, uh, if say there is a class and the other this is a random example if say in a class there is a student called ajay and the author says that ajay is a very good student and he praises his uh, behavior he says that okay ajay comes to class on time he is very good at academics uh, and he stands out amongst his uh, peers and all and in the para summary they give all the good qualities that ajay has but instead of saying that he's a very good student they say that he's the best uh, student in the class academically now, if you go through the uh, para summary, you feel that, okay, this seems to be correct. Uh, the para was praising Ajay. The, they were saying that he's a good student, he comes on time, etc, etc. And even this option says that he, it's giving all the good qualities and it's saying he's the best student in the school, in the class. And so, you would tick it and go to the next uh, question. But over here, the thing that you should identify is that uh, the passage did not say that he's the best student. The passage said that he's a very good student. And there's a key difference between those two. Uh, those uh, small, small changes... Uh, are important and the way I identify it is when I look at the four options I try to figure out which is the option which is definitely false in every option I try to eliminate the options I feel that okay in this option they are mentioning this which is definitely not correct and finally I will be left with two options and then I have to pick out which of the option is uh, more correct and then I try to identify how are these two options differing from each other once you look at it you will be able to easily identify what is the change that the question setter has actually made because in the earlier example, one option would say Ajay is very good at his academics and the other option will say Ajay is the best in his class in academics. Now you will immediately identify that, okay, okay, the paragraph did not say that he is the best in his class. The paragraph just said that he is very good, he is a very good student. So that way I solved para summaries and I felt that the three para summaries were definitely on the easier side. There were two odd one out. One of them I felt was very easy because I was able to identify what are the remaining four uh, para jumbles and how they actually... Uh, can be arranged. So, I was immediately able to figure out which is the odd one out sentence. But the second odd one out question, I had difficulty in answering. So, that is the reason I am giving uh, this to be slightly on the medium side. Overall, a very good attempt, uh, somebody who is looking to score say 90 plus percentile in verbal section should be looking to get between 25 to 30 in this section.